Hi, good evening everybody. I, this is Pastor David here again and it's once upon a time with Rinpoche time. Okay, so let's see. Today we will be about uh, oracles, divination oracles. Okay, let me see if I'm online. I should be. I am. Goody. Okay, so yep and i'm online and uh nice to see you to see you guys again and um i guess i have to hold on for a while to wait for more people to come on and um anyway just just on this topic um why um, it's not so much as the divinations i'm going to talk about it's actually more about oracles it's just that um it's kind of like a two-part series. Today will be about oracles, and then the following session, two weeks from now, would be about um, divin on actual divination itself. Um, why I put them together is because one of the purposes of an oracle is to divine the future. Okay, that was the original intention of um, oracles in general. Okay, I can see. Okay, I can see some messages. Um, uh, yup, Z Ing. Oh, okay. Hi, good evening. Um, Hook Ping Tan. Good evening to you and Navita. Nice to see you here. Um, Andrea. Good evening. Yep, today will be about oracles. So when it comes to about oracles, um, it's not something specifically uniquely a Buddhist thing. It is something that's um. You find in many, many indigenous cultures of any country around the world um, where there is a belief that a higher force, a divinity, a being that can enter, that can take possession of a man, of an oracle, in order to, to give predictions, pronouncements, and maybe some blessings for you know uh, devotees so that was how i think oracles you know because uh, there, there are many many cases in many cultures not just in buddhism it's just that in buddhism it, it's taken on a different approach and um even for the oracle himself there is uh, quite a lot to be done in order to be trained as an oracle all right so Rinpoche, what what Sam Rinpoche, his name is Sam Rinpoche's views on an oracle is that um, he 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 thinks the 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 tradition, especially the one in in Buddhism, is very 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 beneficial um, on many many levels. So Rinpoche himself, interestingly, um, he wanted to be an oracle before he was a Rinpoche. But anyway, I, I won't jump the gun. Let me begin. You know. Um, right from the beginning, you know. I mean, if you read Rinpoche's story, you would, you would, you find this familiar, in the sense that um, when he was very young, you know, when he he was born in Taiwan, and um, as in in Taiwanese culture, there is a lot of um, there is a lot of puppets. There's a lot of um, shows where actors with bright costumes and um, makeup and you know um, armor and hair pieces so Rimje as a as a young boy was very fascinated with that especially the the puppets and uh, he didn't know why but later on years later he realized the significance because it's very very similar uh, to the Chinese puppet the Chinese dolls um, especially the ones that are used in um, what do we call it a Chinese operas you know there's a puppet version, and of course, there's a live version of a, of of people wearing the costume, and then there's the puppets. They they resemble each other, and so the makeup and not not the makeup lah, but the costume itself was very very much similar to Tibetan oracles. And by the way, Tibetan oracles are known as kuten, physical basis. So that's the term. That's the generic term for oracles in general. All right. Alright, uh, 
I see more people has come on. Good evening to Esther, uh, Tata Ong, Hannah, CK Sia, Jensen. Oh, good evening. And uh, Eric, Waylon, Luke Whalen, and Sharon. Um, you asked something, um, Jensen. Good evening, Pastor. Sidetrack, when will Roger's Secrets be replenished? News, Doji Shooting, and Setup Statues. I wouldn't know. <laughs> maybe maybe you can ask them directly. You can put a... I, I'm not really a part of <laughs> Roger's Secrets, but that's that's a very good question. And um, and this person called Sun Reef Solar. <laughs> and Losang Sutram. Okay, anyway, back to what I was talking about. Rimache was very fascinated with the dolls and then um, the, the Chinese puppets. So it was there was a correlation. Later on, in hindsight, Rimache realized as a child that fascination was because he, he realized that it was something to do with something he had seen, but not from this life, something from a previous life, his connection with oracles. And... Um, Later on, much later, when we found out um, about Rinpoche's, when Rinpoche was recognized and then there were some uh, connections made with uh, surviving students of his previous life and we did an interview with one particular very old student from Rinpoche's previous life student, okay? And he said that uh, he gave us little details about Rinpoche in his previous life and one of them was that uh, Rinpoche was known to make oracles in his previous life. So he, he was good with that. He, he could, many lamas do that, and uh, Rinpoche is a particularly, in his, in his previous life, used to do that. And um, yeah. So what happened is, um, that was what Rinpoche was. And then as, as, um, as he, you know, he, he, he uh, as he grew up, he he went he he left home and he went to Los Angeles and then from Los Angeles he he um he met his gurus, uh Geshe Trum Gelson and then Song Rimaji and then finally he made the promise to be a monk and then from there he went to India. And that it was in India that he he encountered many situations in which he had direct encounters with an oracle. Okay, with uh, with the with the oracle of the monastery. Ganden Monastery has an oracle, and um, the the Dharma protector of Ganden Shatse, of course, is Satrap, and he takes chance of Satrap, of course, the oracle. And um, Rimeshi had encounters, of course, encounters as in you know, requesting um, audiences and um, uh, not so much requesting audience, but more like certain questions like pertaining to what he, you know, especially when he had to travel to Malaysia. I'm sure there's a very famous story that all of you know. So for, for Rinpoche himself, for Rinpoche himself, uh, oracle, the, the tradition of oracles was very much, um, was very much <clears throat> something he believed in from the very start, something that um, he, fa he felt was very beneficial because uh, in Rinpoche's encounter with oracles, right even from the beginning, um, with uh, oracles even in, in India, Tibetan oracles um, of divinities of, of the Tibetan pantheon where um, Dhamma protectors la, that uh, were highly accurate. The prophecies and predictions were highly, highly accurate. All right. So that, that led Rimache to initially, before he was recognized, Rimji wanted to be an oracle himself. Um, this is something in Rimji's biography, and what happened is uh, Rimji himself. I don't think Rimji spoke as much, but in my, ex I mean, from my many years with Rimji, Rimji has told many stories, uh, In the sense that um, before he became, because Rimji entered the monastery a little late, so it was a struggle for him um, in terms of. Um, adapting to the monastery and learning the language and studying using a language that he wasn't familiar and then what happened was um, he dis he decided that that at that time he was thinking of what was the best way to benefit most 
the most amount of people. That's what Rimji told me, you know, the most amount of people, what would be the most beneficial? And then he, when he, in his encounter with oracles, he realized that is so beneficial because people, you just, you know, you do a puja. Usually it happens like this, you do a puja, that the, the, some monks will do a puja and then uh, invoke the deity to enter into the oracle and then the oracle lose consciousness. And then, <laughs> and then you are able to benefit a lot of people already by in that way. Okay, the, the idea of an oracle is to give predictions that will help people through um, their difficult times, to give blessings, and to heal. Okay, these are the mo the few things that an oracle does um, for for the public, for people. So they're highly sought after, especially depending on the divinity that enters, because there are many, many oracles, many, many, many different types of oracles, lay oracles. Uh, you, you, one does not need to be a monk in order to be an oracle. One needs to be trained to be an oracle, that's for sure. And it also depends on the, the, the divinity that enters. I say divinity because I'm just using a generic word to, to cover a lot of different types of deities. You know, there are some deities that are very high, very attained, very enlightened. There are some that are not so enlightened. So, um, so if it's if it's something that if it's a if it's the deity is very high, very enlightened. For example, Doji Shukden. All right, uh, for an oracle to take trance of Doji Shukden, a, a normal person to take uh, to to be ready to receive a, de a deity that high, one needs to go through a lot of training. Okay, and the training comes in many ways. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you, Roger Secrets. Thank you for answering Jensen. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, the, so one needs to um, go through a lot of training. Rimmage himself went through the training. And um, I think, yes, that's, why, that's how he met one of, his, one of his teachers eventually. And that is uh, Drigung Rimmage. All right, so the one of these teachers who, who was basically training Rinpoche to be an oracle. So what happens is, uh, it's not so. It's not a process of going to the gym. You know, it's not that kind of training. It's a mental training in a sense that uh, one needs to go do a lot of retreats. Uh, Rinpoche, I've read uh, Rinpoche said that, uh, for example, Doji Shukden, one needs to complete. Um, the Guru Yoga, the Miktima retreat, 100,000 times. But the, the retreat has to be done with the full set of offerings, Thomas and everything that needs to be changed every session. Combine, the prayers are combined, not just the Guru Yoga that we normally did, the Gandan Lagima, which is just like a very short prayer. It's actually um, combined with Lama Chirpa. So it's extended. And um, to complete that, and then one needs to get an initiation after that of uh, Yamantaka or Hayagriva, either one. But in our tradition, uh, Yamantaka is preferred. Okay, Yamantaka initiation and then do a retreat, a hundred thousand on each of the four mantras of uh, Hay uh, Yamantaka. Okay, so Yamantaka is a particularly um, effective practice to clear the channels. How, okay. Now that I'm talking about the channels, technically how a trance works is like this. According to Buddhism, our body, the mind um, has a physical location on our body in a sense that it travels all throughout our body. It travels along the meridians, the psychic channels, what is known as the psychic channels. So it's not something that you can cut a body and see it. It's, in, it's invisible but it's, because it's energy. So the Chinese know it as, Rinpoche said the night Chinese know, know it as qi, and the Tibetans call it lung. All right, so is this energy channels. This energy, the purpose of the energy, the main purpose is actually to regulate the function of the body, to make sure you, you know, you're healthy and all that, to regulate the, the, all the processes of the body. La. But resting on top of the energy is your mind. Okay, so it rests on top of it and it's all over, but it, it, uh, it gathers at specific places, which is what is known as chakras. Chakras is an Indian word to mean like uh, wheel. Wheel. So because the, the wind, according to 
to the the meditational masters they said it, it that's this uh, its appearance physically so it, it goes it revolves in a wheel so these places are all over our body so what happened is um more importantly is how does it relate to a trance okay because when an, when a divinity enters it has to go through one of these entry points and then when it enters the body our energy channels are usually not very clean and um, it is it is uh, blocked it is obstructed it is polluted by our negative emotions by our obs obscurations our karma okay by our karma which is basically our, our the, the actions that we did that that came from our you know our negative emotions lah. so uh, negative emotions include attachment desire anger jealousy and so forth so what happens is um, it becomes an obstruction so for when for a higher being who is more pure who's more compassionate who's pure wisdom for example Dodi so into when it when the divinity like that enters it will it will be very difficult so it will be an obstruction for for the deity to enter fully and um, so what happens is uh, when that when that happens uh, there will be a problem uh, you know in, in in the sense of the trance uh, the, the the what do you call it the quality of the trance why why is there a quality of the trance i, I don't know i, I when i listen to Rimichi's explanation i kind of gather my own um understanding of it i i what i gather is it's something like a um a transistor radio it's like a radio picking up a signal so what happens is if the the signal is not clear meaning the the channels are not clear so it the deity cannot fully take over and so what happens is um the per, the when the, the the deity is speaking it's you're not sure whether it's the deity or the person the, the oracle himself because most of the time the oracles are not attained beings it's just an ordinary person who who happen to have the physical the training and the physical ability some people have natural a little bit natural ability to to take trance all right okay let me see let me see let me see, let me see, let me see what's going on 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 the comments i see a lot of um Jerry Cochlean, good evening, uh, Lily. Good evening. Um, evening here. <laughs> I don't know about where you are. You're probably in England, so it could be morning. <laughs> and um, Sange Tamang, Namaste. And um, Ngai Hin, see some people. And CK Liu. Okay, there's a question here. By CK, why do some no training but the protector will enter their body? Okay, for some people, um, they have natural, um, a natural, what do you call this? Uh, open chakras. So what happens is even when they when they have the natural ability, that when the protector enters, they they usually not the 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 trance is not very clear. Sometimes, most of the time, they're unable to speak, or um, what happens is they, they convulse violently, you know. So it's like they, there's a lot of energy, emotion, uh, uh, what do you call it? Act, uh, you know, when, when, a, when, a date, when a deity enters, there's a lot of shaking, there's a lot of violent movements, and uh, because the energy is very, very strong. And if the channels are not clear, the, the deity cannot even speak. Because there's a video on. Um, um, of Rinpoche, Sam Rinpoche, okay, in Tibet, and he was meeting an or an oracle, and that oracle is in training. He still is unable to speak. So what happened is um, the oracle actually is the deity, like is Doji Shukdin, um, approached and gestured to like that to Sam Rinpoche. Immediately, Sam Rinpoche knew what he what he was what he was uh, requesting. So Rinpoche did a, a, a ritual on him to clear the channel for his um, speech. All right, for his speech to occur. Because later on, later on, we heard this. This oracle started to speak already. After that, not immediately in that session, but after that. So what what I'm trying to say is, they even if they're natural, they still need to be trained. Okay, so. 
because uh, especially for oracles, uh, important um, important oracles of, of deities uh, that like for the Tibetan, for the Tibetans, right? They have state oracles and um, it's important for them to make sure that the oracles are well trained and they keep their commitments. There are certain commitments, I don't know what they are, but they have certain commitments that the oracles need to keep so that their trance is pure, it's clear trances. So when the, the trance is clear, it means what? The, the oracle himself, the person himself is totally knocked out. He's like gone to, you know, this, uh, he's, he's asleep. So the deity has full control. So whatever comes forth, whatever predictions, whatever pronouncements is not from the mind of the oracle, it's from the deity. Because sometimes when it's a partial one, when it's not a clear trance, so it's, it may not be very accurate. That's, it may not be accurate and also um, sometimes it's very private. Okay, it's a, it could be something very important like state affairs that they need to consult the oracle, the deity, the Dharma protector, and they don't want the oracle to know. Okay, so it's just as simple as that. Okay, and then, okay, let me see, Bradley, is the ability to take trance associated with gross or subtle mind? Gross meaning loss at death. Gross, the ability to take trance is of course got to do with the mind, but usually that time, um, the gross mind of the oracle is definitely not, is dissolved, he's asleep. So, um, and it's not his mind that enters, it's a, a mind that is from, you know, from the Dharma protector, the Dharma protector's mind. So during the training, the Lama will make sure that the day he will know. Okay, so you need a Lama to train an oracle. You can, the oracle cannot train himself. You, there's no self, self training for an oracle. You know, you watch a YouTube video and you train yourself. You do the retreats yourself and you train yourself to be an oracle. There's no such thing. You need a qualified Lama to do this for you. Someone who is, who has um, training himself who knows what he's doing and uh, I mean he's attained, uh, he needs to be somewhat attained to be able to do that, I would say. I would say. So yeah, Tam Rinpoche is one of that, one of those lamas who can do that. Okay, and um, gross mind is not lost, it, yeah it's, it's, okay gross mind is your conscious mind. Okay, just to clarify, uh, there is three levels of the mind. Your gross mind, your conscious mind. Your subtle mind is your subconscious. And that's where all your, um, uh, this your dream state mind will surface when you, when, you are, when you are asleep. So that's where the mind that emerges in your sleep. And that's where you, you have dreams. That's from your subtle mind. There's a very, very subtle mind in under un, underneath that that's the one that will not die that's the one that will carry from lifetime unto lifetime and that's where your karma is eventually imprinted into it first comes through your gross mind into your subtle and into this part of the mind the very subtle mind all right so at, at death at the process of death your gross mind will dissolve followed by your subtle mind and then this Last seed, the indestructible seed, it is said to re reside around um, in your heart area. That's why most meditations focus on this heart area to visualize the, the, the mind of the deity. All right, the, the seed syllable, sorry. Okay, anyway. Chung. Besides the condition of the psychic channels in the oracle, does the aggregate karma of the audience affect the quality of the trance too? Good question. Just the karma, la, the aggregate of the karma. <laughs> the karma of, uh, um, okay, the samaya of the person asking the question to the oracle, to the Dharma protector, rather, not that. Let's, well, let's refer to the deity now, to the Dharma protector through, that's taking trance of the oracle, right? It's very important when you're asking for uh, a particular important question, especially if it's something that's pertaining to the future something that you want to be accurate. Your know, Samaya is very important because there's Samaya with the Lama and the Samaya with the Deity as well. Okay? Samaya means your just your spiritual commitment. Okay? So what happens is how do you have Samaya with the Deity and how can it be broken? Samaya with the Deity is um, if you have requested when it comes to divination, questions pertaining to divination, if you requested 
answers for the through the deity before, for example, Dodi Shukden or Setra, whoever, right? And you have not followed through with the with the requests, meaning um, there was something requested by the down protector for you to do, like pujas or whatever, and you didn't do it. What happens in the samaya is already not very good. So the next time when you do, when you request again, they will always be very kind. They will answer your question, but sometimes the the answers will not come out good or accurate or clear. Most of all is clarity. So when it's not clear, then um, what happens is uh, sometimes the down protector will not want to answer it for you, based on the fact of broken samaya. It's broken samaya between you and the deity. All right, and the deity and the samaya can come also in the fact that um, whatever commitments that you have promised to do in relations to the practice of the deity as well, it doesn't have to be just divination questions. All right, so that, don't forget the samaya is not just with the lama. Samaya is uh, many. Samaya is a huge um, thing. We always focus on the samaya, the lama, but actually we have samaya with everyone. We have samaya with our dharma brothers and sisters. We have samaya with uh, the deities. With, with the Buddhas, especially the Buddhas that we pray to, we solicit help, the Dhamma protector. Okay, though we have Samaya with them. So when, when the Samaya is broken, then there is an impact on the question. And many times the, the Dhamma protector may not want to answer because it will not be accurate or they can see that we will not listen. Okay, that's why. That's, that's, the, that's why actually. Okay, this is from Luke. What, ha what would happen if the oracle all of a sudden got scared for whatever reason during the puja before the trance? Would the protector still come through? Got scared. Okay, I have no idea what this means. But... Um, usually, um, oracles are kind of well trained. I don't know what why that's a very strange question to ask it's very um I, I i can't really tell you from what i've learned or know because i've never heard of a situation like that before all right so um usually oracles are trained in the sense that um, they have a sense of duty or what they're doing because they have a sense of uh, it's something that will benefit people so they take their whatever they do seriously and will not uh, let their emotions um, get the better of them all right so i mean if you are talking of an oracle in training so sometimes what happens is yeah during the process of training uh, has there are some things that goes on during the process of training um, besides doing retreats and all that what happens is uh the potential oracle will go through a lot of small trances so a lot of div um, deities will enter them unseen beings will enter them not necessarily the dhamma protector the main dhamma protector that the oracle intends to take trance off but it's entourage of the uh, the dhamma protector because when it comes to attained beings like doji shukden or any of the the main dhamma protectors of our tradition they are not just alone, they have entourages. Entourages are divinities that surround them to assist them in their work. Okay, so part of their assistance is to help clear the channels of the oracle. So during training, they know the oracle is in training, so they will take trends of the deity, of the oracle repeatedly. So when, when each time they go in, um, they will clear a little bit, a little bit of spiritual grime <laughs> spiritual dirt you know they'll clear so it, it's a very lengthy process it's a very um when you don't know what's happening um for a person who is unaware you you think that the person is uh screaming and having hysteria okay but actually they're taking trends to clear the channels they may not necessarily talk most of the time it's just screaming so Rinpoche said for, for an oracle, to train an oracle, location is very important. Uh, it has to be a place where it's remote. Okay, it's remote because there'll be a lot of screaming involved and it's a very physically taxing um, experience for the oracle and for the person training because it, it, can, can, it can happen all day, all night, especially towards the, the later part of the training.
Yeah, thank you, Sharon. That's the one I was referring to. What's the title? Might have to do a manual search. The link is not clickable. This is the video. Oh, okay, okay. Intimidated, nervous. I should, I should offset. Intimidated. Hmm. I I really cannot uh say unless I will um, you know I know more of the situation and what the oracle is going through and anyway I'm not expert in oracle I'm just telling you I'm just like, doing this giving this explanation based on years of being with Mirce and um to impart into you guys not so much as the mysticism of oracles but how beneficial it can be and um from Rimshe, he feels it's very very beneficial from a massive scale uh, for a buddhist organization for a person um it very very uh helpful for on for many things especially for the growth of spirituality of buddhism okay this is from leslie leong hi good evening is concept of oracle oracle taking trans or protector same as those practiced in Taoism for example Kuan Yin or Chai Kung or Datu Kung or any of those medium types okay yes that's a very good question um, as I said lah, it depends on the divinity that enters okay for for the level of the divinity so the one in our tradition the oracles that we, we um, solicit assistance from that we you will know, request answers from are uh, oracles that tra take trends of higher beings uh, enlightened beings um i cannot say for the taoists the other the other beliefs um the oracles the the mediums what deity that enters because um it's very very hard to say because i'm not trained i'm not psychic i don't have the third eye <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm not Rinpoche, so I would not be able to tell. And this is very interesting now uh, because um, over the years, Rinpoche hasn't spoken much or have any much interest in the look in the, the roadside mediums, the the, the deities that take trends of datokongs. Datokungs are land, landowners. It's translated, the Tibetan term is translated into English as landowners. So um, they are beings, unseen beings that inhabit a particular location that is particularly powerful. Sometimes they are Nagas. Nagas are serpentine beings. They, have, they are more animal-like than, than intelligent, than human-like. Um, sometimes they are uh, a dead uh, uh, a, a person who has passed away and so um, and the spirit has taken rebirth there as you know and um, has very powerful so what happens is when they're very powerful they, they create a lot of, of uh, issues sometimes problems some, sometimes benefit so the people notice that if you pray to them, they will be beneficial. And then eventually some of them are so powerful that they, they start taking trends of certain people. That is for local deities. That's for Datukung. Datukung and local, de local deities, landowners, same meaning. Okay. So then there are other, in the, in the Taoist tradition, there is the Chai Kung and all that. I cannot comment. I'm so sorry. I'm not, I, I firstly, I'm not tr attained enough to tell. One of the ways I noticed Rinpoche did in the past is to see um, how they react to Dodi Shukden for these beings. And um, for, for, for the, the temple mediums, um, if they're able to tell um, the level of Dodi Shukden, so if they're able to tell the level, it doesn't mean that they're, they're attained, but they, it, it, because what happens is if they are, it, you know, because some of them are just regular spirits, some of them can be actually, I think Rinpoche was more concerned if they have evil motives. So what happens if they have evil motives, um, immediately they will, they will leave, they, they will go out of trance, because they're scared. They'll be scared of Dodi Shukden. 
an image of Doji Shukden, a consecrated item of Doji Shukden, or even someone in the or in the audience reciting a mantra. A, a negative spirit will not be able to bear it. Okay, this is what will happen. All right, so um, yeah, so that for me, I can't tell. All right, so I wouldn't go into that. I would go into the level of in in our in our tradition. What we believe is that we look to higher beings for requests, for blessings, for answers. Because their answers, what's the difference? All of these deities can see into the future, but how far they see is makes the difference of their level. Okay, so for for some, they can only see like a few years. So they will give you answers based on a few years or what they can see. Some will give you answers that are based on decades, some even lifetimes. So the lifetimes are in, in attain beings like Doji Shukden. So for those who cannot see that far, will be giving you answers that are only very short. So what happens is most of the time, uh, whatever that is, uh, that is for short-term benefit, long-term will not come out good. All right, just bear that, bear, just remember this. Okay, there's some conversation online that is cutting into what I was saying. <laughs> Let me see. Okay, Bradley, it's a subtlest Dhammakaya mind stream of the deity that enters the oracle after the oracle has parked his own mind stream somewhere else temporarily. In short, no. And then uh, Pastor Naral says, Hi, look, I don't think the oracle would get nervous or intimidated before a full trance because the oracle would have taken trance hundreds, if not thousands of times during the training period and would have a strong connection to the down protect. Oh, that's a very good answer. All right. Um, okay, back to the topic. <laughs> So what happens is, uh, for for Rinpoche, he was he was planning to be an oracle. He was he was going to retreats, and um, but he did not finish his retreats. So his training, sorry, he finished his retreats, but he didn't finish his training because eventually, what happened was uh, his recognition came in. His recognition as a Rinpoche. So his his teachers told him, "Do not be an oracle." In in uh, in Buddhism. It, it's not oracles that tells the future that, that is beneficial. It's a guru who imparts the Dharma that is most beneficial. Okay, that's infinitely more beneficial than telling the future. So, because why, why is knowing the Dharma more beneficial than knowing what's going to happen in the future? Because knowing the Dharma changes, helps us to correct our actions help us to uh, transform our mind, change, call, purify our karma, know, do the practices that purify our karma, accumulate merit, and change our destiny. So what we know in the future, we may not be able to, even if we know we may not be able to totally um, avoid due to karma. Okay, due to karma. So what's what would be more beneficial if we transform our mind? Create the causes that will change the future. There's more in, more important, and based on this fact, that's why the gift of the Dharma is more important than the gift of prophecy. Hence, the his Lama told Rinpoche, "You be a Rinpoche, you teach, and um, you be you know you do you you do the 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 what you what is supposed to be done for a Rinpoche." Okay, so Rinpoche was a little disheartened, but he he followed. Because he's very devoted to his to his Lama. Alright. So but anyway, Rimache over the years, after that, um, over the years he had consulted oracles um, on many, many occasions um, pertaining to himself as, and also especially for others. And he has been very, very beneficial and is and many on many occasions he had saved their lives. Alright. So sometimes uh, it's divinations done through the oracle, meaning the oracle himself, the deity, the Dharma protector, most likely, most of the time is Doji Shukden, sometimes Setra, but mostly Doji Shukden, uh, giving the prophecy. 
and sometimes it's Rinpoche doing divination. This is something I will put to next week. Um, not next week, the next session about divin that divination, dice divination. Okay, with today is about the oracles. So, um, yeah. So, any other questions? In the past, um, Rimichi had, if you if you read, Rimichi had trained an oracle before, a local oracle, and Rimichi in plan what he what he planned to do was to have a local oracle because one of the benefits of a local oracle is that when the oracle takes trance of the deity, um, the Dhamma protector, the language that is used by the Dhamma protector depends on the oracle. Rimuji say it's something like a, um, a guest in a hotel. So when you enter into a hotel, whatever, um, what do you call it? Furnishings or, or, or in, in the hotel room, um, facilities available in the hotel room, then the, the guests are able to use it, right? If, if it's there. So likewise, Rimuji said for an oracle, if the Dhamma detector enters, the language that we that we use by the oracle would be dependent on the the native tongue of the oracle. So if the, the native tongue of the oracle is English or Chinese or a local language, then the the Dhamma protector will speak using that language. All right. So that's a huge benefit because otherwise, um, like right now, the, the the oracles that we consult. Are Tibetan oracles, like for example, Chojela, the Panglo oracle, and he his native tongue is uh, Tibetan. So naturally, the Dhamma protector was speaking Tibetan, and so the process is from Tibetan, and it's it's um it's try have to go through the translation. To the for questions also have to be translated, and then it goes through a few levels, and then it you know so it, it will save time, it will save effort, and um. So that will be most when she feels in, in the future that will be very very beneficial. Unfortunately, if you are wondering what happened to the oracle, you will need to read Rimichi's biography. <laughs> what happened was um, this oracle didn't finish her training. Okay, it's a it's a lady. She did not finish her training, and um, something happened. So un something unforeseen happened, and she left. And so what happened was. Uh, it didn't come through her oracle ship, all right. Yes, you. As I said earlier, oracles. Look, look. You asked whether uh, only lay only. You say, do they ever go tran into trance for lay people? I, that means you are you are saying that whether it's only monks who can take trance, right? That's what you meant. No, it's not monks. There is lay oracles as well. The lady that Rimuji trained was a lay uh, lady. She, she's, she's not a nun. She's, um, I think she was married. I'm not really sure. So, um, there, and, and Rimuji had met many oracles in the past that were lay people. There was a lay man that Rimuji met and um, who took trans or Dodishukin as well in the past. Yeah. So you, one does not need to be a monk in order to be an oracle. One needs to be trained in order to be oracle. Actually, by theory, anybody can be an oracle, by theory. But by practice, by actual practice, not really. Because, um, because of our psychic channels. Sometimes some of us are more heavily polluted. <laughs> so we are a little bit um, polluted inside. So. It, will, it may take a lot of effort to clean it. So sometimes um, it, it also de it depends on the, the person's per persistence and, and uh, whether they want to go through the training. It will take years, sometimes decades, depending. So it really depends on the person. Maybe Hantu. <laughs> Okay, let me see some of the cute questions. Even in Mahayana, Titigaba Bodhisattva practice, there is a dice oracle too. Okay, that's interesting. 
Dice Oracle Titi Gaba. Hmm. In in okay, I don't. I'll, the Dice one, I I really want to keep for the next one because <laughs> otherwise I don't have anything to talk about. <laughs> so yeah, okay. Oh, one thing um, you will notice about the divinities that enter into oracles are mainly even within the the enlightened deities it's the lower enlightened deities lower not in attainment lower as in form okay let me explain this what do i mean by form okay so there there are um, the buddhas are all equal when you are buddha you are a buddha okay your your attainment is there's no high low buddhas okay when you are enlightened you are enlightened so, but there are some deities that are propitiated as Dharma protectors. So the function that we, we call upon them is lower. Why is it lower? It's lower because it's not meant for us to be full in light, for enlightenment, for attainments, for higher attainments. Okay, it's not for that. It is for our, to, you know, to purify our karma, to to overcome obstacles, to create favorable conditions, the normal things that we ask now of a Dharma protector, basically. So um, in Buddhism, that is that that function, which is written in our prayers, you know. So what happens is um, it's considered lower. All right. So there's no actually high and lower, but because of that, it's lower. And many of the times, uh, Dharma protectors are emanations of enlightened beings. For example, Dodishutin's emanation of Manjushri. So what happens is uh, when they emanate as Dodishutin, right? He is emanated. He 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 has he has actually taken rebirth. Okay, within samsara, he is not manifesting as manjushri like in, in in an enlightened body so there is a difference there's an enlightened body and there is a samsaric body so why why did dodishukin take take rebirth in a samsaric body as a worldly god because the karma with sanctioned beings is stronger the, the affinity and karma is stronger so that he's able to come to our assistance all right this is for that reason why I'm saying all this is to explain to you that most of the time when you look at the oracles, the ones that um, you will find that many of the oracles in the Tibetan tradition, the deities that enter are of the lower um, enlightened ones or unenlightened. Okay, the higher, you know, you never see oracles of Tara, of oracles of Manjushri, oracles of Vajrapani, oracles of, uh, you, you never see that. But there are uh, there are cases where they do take you know I I've heard uh, I read in books lah rather I didn't hear I, I read in books not everything is I hear <laughs> I read in books that, that in the past there are some who are able to channel Tara. But um, I don't I mean in recent times I've not come across any that is like in the past you know in in history books in old books. Okay, Rinpoche, also another concept I need to explain is uh, the difference between channeling and trance. <clears throat> it sounds the same, but it's not um, in terms of the actual process, all right? So when the deity enters, there is a process where um, if it's not complete, then the completion can be the completion of the the entering the possession can be for men a variety of reasons uh, for example um, it can be because the person didn't finish training that's one or it could be the the it, the, the person's uh, commitments or the, the channels have been not you know uh, polluted so that it could be any of these reasons lah so what happens is it's not a full trance. It's it's uh, Rinpoche calls the word calls it channeling. So when he, when a when a person channels a, a, a deity, it's semi trance. So what it means is it's a mixture of the deity and the the, the oracle's mind. So they are like a little aware, but like you know not fully. And the deity. So that's the danger for channelers is that uh, whatever that is spoken, whatever uh, there was pronouncements, predictions, may not be from the deity, may not fully be. 
maybe it's just half half. So it's 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 uh, subject to, you know, um, contention. Like where some people may not believe, some people, you know, it may not be as accurate as it should be. All right. So there are down. Okay, now let's let me go into the questions here. So in order to train, you, uh, must you start very young? Usually, okay, that's that's a very good question. Usually, um, oracles are picked. There are, there are cases where the oracles are usually I, what I read is usually oracles are picked. The they were meaning that oracles were will receive a sign from the Dharma protector. There are certain signs of uh, that a person will take, but that will, they have the potential to take trance. You know, one of them, as far as I can remember, is that they already, you know, they black out when they go to holy places like um, Lama Songkapa's mausoleum in Ganden Monastery. There's a there's a very very holy place in our tradition where Lama Songkapa's stupa is. Okay, right now it's stupa. In the past, it was actually his mummified body. So, but it, it was it was burned. So the remains are in tomb inside a stupa in Ganden Monastery in Tibet. All right. So that that place is considered very very holy. So uh, there are people who go there on pilgrimage all the time for Tibetans. So when 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 a potential oracle goes there, what happens is there's a, if they are picked by the down protector, they will take trance. They will usually they will pass out. Yeah, they will pass out, and I mean it will be a trance, but it's not a full trance. So it is like the person felt, you know, felt unconscious. And um, there'll be there'll be dreams, there'll be signs, and um, sometimes they will have a lot of blackouts constantly, and um, it it almost seemed like they have fits or and stuff like that. So it would take an a llama to to check. To make sure what you know that is what, what to to diagnose that condition lah to know that oh this person is picked and um, can be there's a potential to be a, uh, an oracle, all right. So usually um, they would get it quite young lah you know those signs when they are they're picked by the dharma protector, all right. So that's that's as far as I've read and seen. All right. I mean, there's. I, I I'm not sure about all oracles, but I'm sure that uh, some of them, they decided to be one, so they you go through the training. So when you're not picked and you decide to be an oracle, so the the journey will be a bit longer, I would say, because of usually when they're picked, it's because they the physical body, the the chakras and all that are. It's easier. Okay, it will be easier, the training will be easier than a person who is not picked because there's a high chance that the, it will be a lengthy one. All right. This is as far as I know uh, what Rumichi, the word I, I heard Rumichi conveyed before. Okay, there's some other questions here. My mind has gone to pieces, so I'll leave it to the professionals. I hope you're not taking trance. <laughs> Okay, Feng Hui, how do you get to know Rinpoche and got into all this? Just a brief history. <laughs> I have a book, you know, I wrote about it. How I got into, you know, this whole thing is because of, um, I met Rinpoche at the gym. I knew him as a friend. And um, it, that's a brief history. Yeah, I, I met, I, I was gym buddies with Rinpoche. In other words, it was a short period, lah. You know, I went to the gym for a while, and Rimaji happened to be going doing some training in the gym as well that time, and and then um, I um, just became friends with him, you know, because I, I used to go and I see him, and for some reason, um, I remember I was the one who said hello, and then I mean just say hello, you know, you just, I, we pass every day, and then um, eventually we became friends, and then. For some reason, when, when, when I became friends with him, I remember I had a dream. And it was, uh, it was a very strange dream because I cannot remember details of the dream. I just remember a voice in the dream that told me that this person, the voice said, this person referring to Rinpoche, I didn't know Rinpoche, who Rinpoche was that time, 
will change your life. Yeah, that dream. So it stood out for me. Later, I told Rinpoche. <laughs> I did eventually tell Rinpoche, but not so, not immediately. And Rinpoche just asked me. Rinpoche's reaction was, um, he. I thought Rinpoche because that time Rinpoche was very casual in the early days, and I thought Rinpoche would um, would laugh and and you know didn't wouldn't take it seriously. I didn't really take the it very seriously. It just, I just thought it was strange, and then. Um, but Rinpoche took it quite seriously to my surprise and he said that he looked at me and he said oh you, um, don't forget it he told me all right so any other aspects of uh, oracles that i would like to talk about is that oh there's one more thing we actually originally in plan to have an oracle here in Kachara. And um, part of the what Rimuchi was doing, what, what, what Rimuchi did was strange, I find, but it was interesting because um, he, I mean, he, he had, uh, he definitely had a few people in mind, but more, more unusually is that, um, he felt that it was not something that is um, because of his of past experience. So he had to be a little careful of oracles, because he's belie he believes that oracles and the gift of prophecy is is something that is should be done with no commercial. Uh, you know that you do, it's not meant for you to make money because there is a definitely definitely huge potential for making a lot of crazy amounts of money crazy Rimji doesn't believe in that okay it, he he believes that oracles should be free it shouldn't be you know be meant used to make money that, in other words so he has to be very careful of who he ch choose to be an oracle. He has to be careful of um, whether they, they are practitioners themselves. They're real practitioners, not just do mantras and all that to train themselves, just to be an oracle. The purpose of the retreats, Rinpoche said, to be an oracle is not to be an oracle. Contrary to what it, it sounds like initially, the purpose of the retreats, you know, for example, Lama Tsongkhapa, for example, Yamataka and so forth, is actually to um, to be enlightened, to purify your karma and be enlightened, be attained enlightened. That's the main purpose. So it's it's just a side benefit that you're able to to take trance, and benefit a lot of people. That will further your practice when you do it. When the oracle does it wholeheartedly, believing that it's for practice, not a, a chance to make money to gain some ampals here no not for that kind of motivation so Rinpoche is very strict about that so I, what the strange part is not that the strange part is what Rinpoche did was he a, num a couple of years before Rinpoche entered Pari Nirvana he requested for a statue to be made of an oracle Okay, that that or that statue now is in Kachar Forest Retreat, in the temple in his audience room. It is a a statue of an or of a person of an oracle, wearing the full full robes, full costume, full regalia of an oracle. Okay, so what happens is uh, it's the full one, full one meaning the the one with the um, what do you call it the the flags, yeah, the flags and the. the the weapons, the implements, everything in full trance. And um, I remember Rinpoche said that it was to create the cause for an oracle to arise in the future. So maybe Rinpoche, when he comes back, he will do that, but I, uh, not too soon, now, I assume. Does using the oracle divination to make money cause negative karma for the person or the oracle? No, I don't think it, it, it's it's it bad karma per se. I think I do think that um, what happens is uh, would, would you consider bad karma as bad karma? Degenerate. 
Okay, Pastor Naral says, who is expert in oracle ship, says it's bad karma. So what happens is, I, 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 I think it adds to broken samaya. Definitely the Lama will not allow that. And um, it will create the, the oracle, it will create the cause for the oracle to degenerate. So when the, when the oracle degenerate, um, the oracle's ability to take trance runs on his samaya with the Lama. Okay, because there are many stories. I, I remember one story of an, a very, very famous oracle. His trance is extra clear and um, very, very um, powerful trances of Dodishukten and Setrap and all that. And um, there's one time he was not happy with Song Rinpoche. All right, he said something and immediately he couldn't take trance. I remember, she, I remember the way Rinpoche described it. He said that the whole monastery gathered and then they were they were doing the invocation, you know. And you know the invocation, the the it's very dramatic, you know, with the drums and the cymbals and <laughs> nothing happened. When he said he was just there, <laughs> you know. He's still himself. <laughs> so not, and they did it a few times, nothing happened. Then later on, it dawned on him what happened, and he realized he made a mistake, and um, so he actually went and sought apology from Song Rinpoche, and after that, he could take trance again. So it's important on, on uh, Samaya. Okay, in what situation that a person can get divination from Oracle? In what situation when it's... Okay, um, usually divination questions, divination, it should be... I mean, in, in, what, in, in Kachara, it's not something we ask for small things. We, it's always about um, something that we cannot figure it ourselves. You know, a lot of things in life, you just need to have common sense and um, to do. You know, sometimes and we cannot overly rely on uh, divination as well. It's things that we cannot rely on our intellect in order to solve. That's one. Another thing is it has to be something of importance. For example, like medical. For example, like something to do with uh, a life and death, um, a major decision. So it's, it's usually things like that. It's not something small like, oh, I lost my car keys. I can't find it. Can I do a divination? Find where, where, where my car keys are? Not those kind of divinations. And... Um, yeah, it's usually things like that. And especially when it comes to uh, practice, um, uh, obstacles, overcome obstacles, what pujas to do. Um, what, what pujas if, if there's a spirit affliction, uh, if a person is going through some, you know, like trouble, difficulties, things like that. Okay, something major. So Chung says, Rinpoche holds vows very strongly, so wrong motivation in respect to income or money is a big no-no. How would we know if the deity is in the trance is really the deity? Oh, that's a very good question. How we check if it's the deity? Uh, first of all, it, it, it's, that's why you need a qualified Lama. You and I can, will not know because there are some people who are very good um, actors. Um, some very simple uh, ways to check that you don't, don't need a lama is actually those things that he, he carries. He, he, you know, the, especially if it's a full trance, the hat. Those are very things we can tell, uh, you know, if, because the hat is extremely heavy. And um, if, the, if the person's... Um, I mean, just to know if it's a trance, it's not the deity. Like, it could be a spirit for all you know. Because, because they are in trance, they will move very rigorously. And they will sometimes they will they will make uh, movements with the head that a normal person with that with the, that hat on the head would snap the neck. That's what Rinpoche said. But normally, normally with it would take lamas to check, and also in the past for state oracles, they will question the state oracle. They will check the state oracle to make to ask, and they will ask them. They will ask them, okay, on this and this year. You gave a prediction. What prediction was that? Things like that. Okay, so it'll be the Lama, you'll be checking with previous predictions. It will be, you know, the, the costume themselves, the, the what, what, 
you know, what they're, they're carrying. And also each deity has a particular, no matter what oracle they, they take trance of, they have a particular um, signature, you know, uh, a sound they make, um, a movement they make, movement not really, more sound. La. Like for example, uh, Satrap makes a very high pitch sound. Um, some depending on the oracle some some dharma protectors they are uh, they talk they talk more some like for example like kachimapo like the one in the chojela trance he would be wiping his face but then also do do does that so a lot of them have their own differences uh Rimishi used to show us the video and uh, show us and you know what's the difference and uh, what they do and what's the meaning and um, he showed us a few defining things, but not enough that will cover every all the deities, lah. You know, so it's more of the Lama. It's important that the Lama makes a distinction, not us. Okay, a Lama, a qualified Lama. So if the qualified Lama is there, because a Lama, when it's a qualified Lama, they would not, uh, would not go wrong. If they levitate, then then that should be beyond doubt. Oh yeah, that's a good idea if they could demonstrate that. Levitate? <laughs> no, no, no oracles I know will do that. It's not a matter of physical feet, you know. Uh, it's not so much as that. It's more of the answers that they give. Most of the time, oracles are consulted for answers for of the future. And... Um, also, one more thing, uh, now that we're talking about that, Doji Shukden has a very, is very different from other oracles and other deities, other Dharma protectors, in the sense that uh, he takes trends in the form of a Lama as well. Okay? Only in the Gandan oracle though. So what happens is, during the time he's more peaceful, and um, it's almost unnoticeable that he's in trance except for the fact that he's wiping his face now with the, with the cloth which is, which is symbolic of him purifying obscurations he's actually have he has to do that to purify obscurations in order for us to have the karma to listen okay there are still trace of obs uh, obscurations that we have that he needs to purify otherwise we, there'll be obstacles for us to even to listen so uh, why, what's unusual about this form of uh, Dodi Shutin's trance is that he's able to give teachings. It's very, very rare. You never hear of other Dharma protectors give teachings. Rinpoche stressed that on many, many occasions. This shows one thing, the quality of Dodi Shutin's wisdom and the fact that he is indeed incarnation of previous high lamas that are some of the greatest scholars of Tibet. Okay, for example, like Panchen Sonan Trapa, these are big names. You, you, we may not be in the Tibetan, in the Tibetan world to, uh, to know these names, but in the Tibetan uh, history, they are the biggest scholars. Panchen Sonan Trapa, Dozin Trapa Gelsen, Tuku Trapa Gelsen, and so forth. Okay, so these are great lamas. They're highly learned, attained. All right, so they're able to give predictions with dharma on top all right it's not just oh tell you what's going to happen in the future he will tell you from the spend point of dharma and give you a dharma talk as well okay jensen says what gave me faith and confidence in doji shuten's oracle is it's dharma dharma centric always that's the thing about doji shuten's uh, he always give dharma from the standpoint of dharma from the standpoint of be beginning, middle, and end. Beneficial, whether it's beneficial beginning, middle, and end or not. Alright. By the way, at first I thought him wiping his face during trance was due to the ruffle form of being very hot. <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting theory. But no, no. That, that's, he's, he's, it's not because he's hot. <laughs> it's not because he's hot. But I, I'm sure, I'm sure it, it, for the oracle himself, it, it must be very unpleasant to be wearing that, especially in our weather here in Malaysia, you know. <laughs> but no, it's not because it's hot that's wiping. <laughs> and I, I, was, I know, okay, um, if you watch the, 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 the video of uh, the Panglong oracle taking trance in Kachara, I, I was the one assisting him. So I had a really good oppor opportunity to observe 
close up. All right. So one of the things. So Rimichi asked me after the thing. So what do, what do you observe? What 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 do you experience? Uh, I I um. I just I I mean he he. I didn't have much unusual experience. It's it's just fascinating to be so close up. Um, I just noticed one thing um, is that when he for Kachemapo, when he was um, wipe, when he's wiping his face, when he's taking something from me, you know, sometimes he's people you know, offerings made and so and then he wants to make offerings. Sometimes there's 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 an occasion where he wanted to make offerings to Sam Rinpoche. So that process involves someone passing the oracle, uh, the 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 representation of the body, speech, and mind. So you have to pass to that person. Uh, that the person has a pass to the oracle and the oracle pass to me you know so during that time his belly his eyes are barely open you know i kept looking at him why aren't you looking <laughs> i was thinking you know he's wiping his head he's just not looking you know even even when he is like his eyes are open but he's not really looking you know he's looking somewhere else i was like i mean that's what my experience was like when i observed and um i told rimbachi this and rimbachi said yeah yeah that's because um He's not, he's seeing not with his physical eye. That's what Rinpoche told me. His re Rinpoche's response was that. And I said, oh yeah, it matches. He's not really looking. So when like, he went grab thing, right? He's not really looking at me. He, he does open his eyes a bit, but it's like, it's like very glaring. Things are very glaring to him. So he's, he's like squinting a little and he's not really opening. He's not, you know, he's not looking. That's what I noticed. Of, of me being so close to the oracle. By the way, first time weapon, okay. Flying kata was amazing. Oh, by the way, people think it's just a flying kata. I know what you're talking about, what picture you're talking about. Okay, let me explain this picture, okay? The one that the flying kata where, where um, the oracle was blessing the statue, right? It was a kata, a handful of rice. He blessed the rice, he put it into the kata, I, he, he somehow twisted it and he threw it. And when he threw it, the rice in the kata did not disperse until it hit the top. So it was like a, it was, I don't know how to say, it, it was like there was some kind of invisible force holding it together because when you look at the picture, it just looked like a normal kata, you know, but there's rice in it. I remember there was rice in it and he threw it and I was like and when he threw when when he threw it, it just exploded the rice on you know when he reached the top lah. And I was like, wow. Actually the one actually the I actually that was not so unusual. The another one I noticed, but it's not in our uh, uh, in in the trance in Kachara, was the same oracle when he took trance in um I think Supom. He was it was a uh, officiating a oh it was a trance or opening of the monastery or something and he took trance and he went everywhere um, blessing the monastery and I remember he was just throwing kata you know it's just and he looked very casual when he threw kata <laughs> so when he threw it I noticed one thing when the the kata landed it landed very nicely you know as 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 if someone placed it nicely that's what I noticed lah yeah. Can you receive any blessing if you are not personally present during the trance? Yes, you can. Uh, if you're not personally at, uh, at the trance, you don't need to be at the trance to receive blessing. But if you are there, if you're there, it's, there, is a, there is even more powerful because you are in the presence of the deity who is there. In the, you know. So, um, because actually the whole audience, there are 700 that day, you know, went up to the, the oracle and received blessings directly from the oracle, okay? So, um, if you're not there, you still can. You just do a puja, just recite the mantra. If it's Doji Shukten, you want a blessing, you just do the... You do, you, actually, we sh we are, it's advised that it's advisable for us to do our daily prayers, our sadhana, including... That includes uh, Doji Shukten. We should combine, I mean, which most likely will be Lama Tsongkhapa, or Manjushri combined with Doji Shukten. That would be most recommended to receive blessings, all right? To purify our karma, to keep our negative karma at bay. 
because all of us have negative karma and it's just um and it multiplies every day okay so it, it it's uh to keep it at bay to create a uh, a connection you know a connection an affinity with Dodishukhtin. don't just pray to Dodishukhtin when you need his help pray to him every single day you don't have to you don't need to do long lengthy pujas no need to be lengthy it just it can be as simple as a praise you know the praise of Dodishukhtin. You can find it. There's many versions. There's many like one. There are some that is composed by Rinpoche. There's some that were from Chujan Rinpoche or, or whatever. And then you can do um, uh, the mantra if you are if you want it really short and sweet. Or you can, you know, you can do the the diamond path. And the diamond path is not very long either. It's it's. I don't find it very long. It's you don't have to do both languages. You just do one language. There's Tibetan and English. Do the English or do the Tibetan, whichever you know suits you. All right. Like during a live broadcast, can they are definitely? Oh yes, yes you can. Just offer incense if you are watching some a uh, 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 broadcast of a trance. Yeah, you can. You you just offer incense, and you think because the Dharma protector is you know he he he's he's clairvoyant. He will know if you make requests for blessings. Okay, so you offer incense and you make a prayer. You can recite the mantra and receive a blessing. Why do no training but the protector will enter? Oh, that would be scary. <laughs> All right, I think that has come to an end. It's a bit uh, jumbled up today, but uh, I hoped I've given you a nice little you know explanation telling you from the perspective of Rinpoche his explanations of oracles his experience and a little bit from passing around he's also very knowledgeable about this thank you and um, yeah but the, the purpose of the oracle the gift of divination the gift of prophecy whether it's through the oracle or through whatever means like dice divination which i will talk on the next session is for us to benefit others to help us go through obstacles and more importantly so that we can practice the dharma so when we have that motivation in mind then it will be beneficial otherwise it will just be an ordinary action of you know for this life that benefits this life so, I mean, if you study the Lam Rim, or you intend to be a practitioner of the Lam Rim, our practice should be not based on this life. Our practice should be based on, at the very least, on future lives. Actually, the highest, the best in the Lam Rim is to be enlightened. Okay? So, knowing the future does not help actually our practice at all. Knowing the future makes it easier. It makes it easier, helps us, um, with our problems and difficulties only of this life all right so the motivation should be for future lives or enlightenment itself okay so that's why um, it's important for us to practice the dharma not just be fascinated with oracles and magic although it is fast there is a lot of mysticism there's a lot of benefit from it but there's there is a higher goal in it as well so we should look to, in, in that direction all right Huh? Bangui. On the on the on the comments. I don't see it though. I think uh, okay. Um, I just see chungs. I think blessing receive is more a function of your relationship with the oracle compared to the physical cl closeness. It's by the power of thought. She asked if you can explain a little bit more Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, I've been requested to explain a little thing about the the Dodishukun Day. Okay, Dodishukun Day is on the 24th of August. That's a Tuesday, if I remember correctly. And that is a day uh, that was agreed upon by a group of 
uh, by the Dodishikun society with all the, uh, including representative of Kachara present, um, to be a day to celebrate, to commemorate Dodishikun. Okay, so this year happens to be the anniversary, I forgot how many years. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, all, don't remember all the details, but you can find it on the blog site. So what happens is um, they have requested uh, the high lamas of our tradition that includes uh, the Gandan Triso, Lungrik Namgyal, um, Pabongka Rinpoche and Trijang Rinpoche and they have come up with a series of pujas. It is recommended to be done in the form of a, uh, a prayer festival, okay, like, like the ones that we read about um, that Lama Tsongkhapa instituted in the past. So what happened is I have started a challenge on the Kacharians and Friends page. I hope you have seen it. I know some of you have liked it and um, that's all you did, but nobody had committed. Okay, I hope you do. It's very simple. There's only, I hope to accumulate 32 recitations of Manjushri, chanting the names of Manjushri and 32 Dodishukten Pujas. Chanting the names of Manjushri is very short. It's about, you can do the English or the Tibetan. And um, what happened is very short. It's about, I think, half an hour to finish one, one recitation. So it's very short and easy. And the, the, I set the duration for the 24th to the 29th, the week, that week itself. All right, so that we can celebrate this together with uh, the, with Dodishutin practitioners around the world. Okay, so because this this celebration is celebrated by all the the Dodishutin monasteries and Dodishutin societies and uh, organizations all over the world. All right, you can see you can read more on the blog site. So, I mean, there's all sorts of pujas that's recommended, but we have focused on the ones that we are familiar with. That is Dodishutin, and the Dodishutin one is um, based on the Diamond Path. And um, if you look at the pages that I've I put on in the, on the Kacharan and Friends page, it sounds a lot, it's not. It's actually just half of that. I think there's about, I, I can't remember the amount of pages, but it's very, I, I did the puja many, many times before. It's about 40 minutes the most. If I do a slow recitation of it, it's about 40 minutes. Fast and you can finish in half an hour. All right, so. So it's only 32, and what, what, how do you go about it? I, I, I requested you to make pledges. So you can pledge, you can do one recitation of Manjushri, chanting the names of Manjushri, or, uh, or one, one of Dojishukden, and so you do it you, in the duration of this, the, the, that I've set. So any of the days, you just pick and then you do, and then you just, you just let, us, let us know, put a picture, you know. On, on the Kachar and Friends group and um, share with us that you've done it and rejoice. You know, we all rejoice. You benefit from it, we benefit from it, and we celebrate together with um, the Dodi Shooting practitioners all from all over the world. All right? If you have any questions, just write me in there, put a comment, and I'll, I'll answer you as soon as possible. All right? And I want to, anyway, uh, ooh. One last thing before we finish, uh, I, some, I often forget to do this. What happens is we have sponsors for this uh, program. Today we have two sponsors, one anonymous and one by Mr. Lam Kok Yun and family. The anonymous sponsor dedicated this to Ms. May His Eminence 25th Samurai Bridges Incarnation Return to Kachara Forest Retreat soon. And then the other one by Mr. Lum and family is dedicated to May His Eminence Tem capture Sam Ribachi return to KFR swiftly to turn the wheel, the Dharma wheel again. All right, so we'll do a quick dedication. Chujabosongaba, Thank you very much and good night.